Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking back up in the Thrive Bible today, so without further ado, Tori's just going to take it from here. Yes, y'all, let's do it. Today's devotional is titled, Seasons Change, God Doesn't. The verse is Ecclesiastes 3.1, and it says this, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. The love letter from God says, Beloved child, I have a divine purpose for every season. There will be seasons when your heart will ache, and in those seasons you will know me as the God of comfort. There will be seasons when you will laugh, and you will know me as the God of celebration. There will be seasons when you prosper, and you will know me as the God of great blessing. There will be seasons when you are in need. And you will know me as the God who is enough for you. Whatever season you are in, rest assured that I am there with you. Love your heavenly father. The reflection says, we all have seasons we love, seasons we long for, and seasons we want to hold on to. As sweet as some seasons can be, others are bitter and hard to survive. Whatever season you are in, ask God to carry you through it and help you embrace it. The treasure of truth says, in every season, God is there. Yeah, I think emphasis is on ask God to help you through it. Yeah. I was kind of feeling two different things as you were reading. The first one being is that I think it's easy for us to cling to a season of old, mm-hmm. you know, to try to relive the glory days. It's like when your life was really great, say you're in a really fun relationship, you were hanging out with a lot of fun people, you're getting good grades, you had a cool job, maybe a cool car, whatever. And then if things go downhill or that relationship ends, or um, maybe there's a sickness in the family or whatever that may be, it can be easy for us to want to cling to those really fond memories and fond moments in our life and we fail to live presently where we are because we're trying to force a square peg into a round hole where we're not in that season anymore. And even though that can bring a lot of joy to reminisce on things, I'm not saying we just forget our past, but I think it can cause us a lot of strife in terms of accepting, embracing, and moving forward, living presently in the season we're currently in. That's something we have to be really careful for. But on the other side, I think we also can bring our past hurts and our past pains and our past um, um, rejections, traumas, whatever that may be, into the next seasons. Mm -hmm. And I think equally we need to, I don't want to say let go of the good seasons and let go of the bad. It sounds kind of hard. But I do think we need to move on from them and embrace what God has for us now because I always say it that you can't grab onto what God has for you now if you're holding to what God gave you previously. Yeah. And so it's like if our hands are full, he can't give us more. Yeah. And so we have to be willing to let go of certain things Mm -hmm. in order to move forward. But we need his help doing it because processing trauma is brutal. Mm -hmm. And being in a harder season or even in a season where we just wish we were we were in the old season, you know, um, that's normal. That's that we experience that. But that doesn't mean that we should stay inside of that. Yeah. I mean, I truly think that one of the hardest things in life to do is to fully live presently Mm -hmm. like fully embracing the season that you're in right now I think it's easy to do what you were talking about and kind of cling on to the old seasons and then I also think it's really easy to say everything's going to be better in the next season and so it's very easy to say that yeah you just long for the next season and then you miss who God is in this season and what God's trying to teach you in this season and you also forget that you're not even promised the next season and so what if you you miss it right like I feel like so often we just we miss it. We miss what God is doing. And I feel like it's such an incredible question to ask the Lord today. Like, God, who are you trying to reveal that you are to me in this season? Like, I remember the season when we were trying to conceive and the Lord became my God of comfort in a very different way. And right now in the newborn stage, he is my God of strength. Like I am leaning on him for strength and endurance in a different way. And there's been seasons where I felt like my life is totally overwhelming and he has truly become my God of peace. There's been seasons where I was counting pennies and can barely make rent. And he was the God that was my provider 
And when I recognize who he was in each season, and I remember that he is the God who does not change, then in the season that I'm currently in, I can recognize where his hand is in different aspects of my life because I know he is a God that encompasses all of these things. And so I encourage you today to like truly ask the Lord in your quiet time or in your time of worship, the time after this devotional ends that we encourage you guys to have, to ask the Lord, like, Lord, who are you to me in this season? Um, Because I feel like when you recognize that, even if it's a season of grief, even if it's a season of hardship, it brings a different level of closeness and intimacy um, between you and the Lord. And so I think it's a really good question to ask. Yeah, I love that. I love everything you said. And it even just made me think that on a daily basis, we can do that. Yep. We don't even need to apply it to like a different month years or, or, yeah. or a year or yeah. a stint or whatever that may be. We can check in with him daily and ask him to reveal who he is today to us because we'll never be able to witness the full glory of who he is until we're with him in heaven. And, and so what a chance for us on this side of heaven to push our comfort aside, push our convenience aside, push our distractions, desires and distractions aside and say, God, I'm feeling this way about this thing. Will you please just revealed to me how you can love me and lead me in this season Mm -hmm. versus us just praying for the only pieces of God that we know, which by the way, it's great that we know those pieces of God. If we trust him as the God of provision, the God of comfort, but also he's the God of strength, which you're experiencing now in this postpartum period. And so you're getting a whole new side of God that maybe you hadn't experienced Mm -hmm. before. And we all can learn from that. Yeah. So good. You ready to pray something out? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that even though our seasons change, you do not, Lord. You just reveal yourself to us in new ways, which is so incredibly cool. Lord, we're so thankful for you. Would you open our eyes to the ways that um, you are providing for us in this season and who you're trying to tell us that you are to us? We love you so much, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. When I was that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we're talking to you tomorrow. Hasta mañana.